Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and as a lot of you know, I love to draw animals, and I know a lot of you out there love to draw animals too, and I was thinking it might be kind of fun to sit down and draw something that we're all really familiar with, and we all have, a lot of us have, pet dogs. I love dogs. Dogs are one of my favorite animals, and uh, I've got my little dog Achilles here, and I thought it would be fun to teach you guys my approach to drawing dogs. I love to draw all kinds of animals, like I said, and dogs are a nice basic way to get into drawing animals. So why don't we jump in really quick. Um, first thing I want to show you, here's a skull. This is the skull of a wolf, which is where all dogs come from. All of our domestic breeds of dog were once, at one time, thousands of years ago, were a wolf. And I want you to see a couple of things. There's the cheekbones right here that are very prominent. There's this ridge on the top of the skull, which is where a lot of muscle attaches because dogs have a nice strong bite ability. So there's a lot of muscle on here. So you'll see a certain shape that hits there. You'll also notice that the eyes are front facing like ours. Dogs are predators. And so their eyes need to have binocular vision. They need to judge depth in order to chase their prey. That's where they all, even our little chihuahuas and our Pekingese and our Shih Tzus and all them, as cute as they are, they're predators, or at least at one time they were. I also want you to notice uh, another thing too. You notice that the, the nose, you know, the nose that we know on a dog is cartilage. And so this is the nasal opening here, but the rest of that that comes out is all cartilage. And there's actually a little break in the nose when we draw it that'll show up there. One other thing I want to show you is look at the top of the, the head and then look at the ridge of the, the top ridge of the snout. They're parallel. They, they, they go in the same line. And I'm going, to show, I'm going to do a drawing and show you. That's very much a dog trait. Even on short snouted dogs, it, it's the same thing. But let's put this down and let's do a quick little drawing. If I draw, let's draw very quickly a snout or a, a skull of a dog. I'm, I'm gonna draw very quickly right here. There's that cheekbone coming down and it goes right into these teeth. There's the canines, incisors there. There's teeth, teeth, teeth here. Unlike our orbital opening, which is where our eyes go, the dogs don't connect on the side. Ours, you know, ours are, are right here. They connect right here on the side, right? And so on a dog, it's open. So you want to make sure that if you're thinking about the skull, that comes like that. Then we have the ridge back here like so. And then we've got the jaw that comes up in here, comes down like so. That's a basic shape of a dog skull. Okay, there it is. Now, draw over this. I'm going to grab my Sharpie marker, put my glasses on, and this is what we get. Muscle attaches here. We get nice eyes. Dogs have the most beautiful eyes, don't they? Snout comes down like so. We get a little break right here. The other, other eye sits right here like so. So there's that. The brow comes down. We'll give them a little bit of the eyebrow. So there's that right there, right? And then the snout comes down. There's a little break. And boom, we got a nose right there. There's that nose. And the nostrils have a little slit on the side. And the corner of the mouth is right about here. And you have a little bulge for the teeth. You got a nice little lip. And if you feel a dog's lip, you know, it's, there's, it's kind of fleshy, so it comes off of the jaw quite a ways. Now remember, there's a cheekbone right there. And depending on the dog breed, you'll have fur and everything coming off right here. And then the ears, now you can have them big and pointed, like so, like on a wolf, like that. 
or they can flop over. There's a little indentation there, and then the. So that is basically how, and there's muscle under here, and then that muscle builds up, comes underneath the, <clears throat> the cheekbone. There we go. There's our little dog right there. Happy, happy, happy dog. All right? So now, how do we draw the body? There's a head. Well, that's one thing I was, remember I was showing you earlier about that, that flat on top of the head and then the flat on top of the nose, how those are parallel. They're parallel with each other, okay? And then if you draw the snout and then draw the neck, draw the ears coming up like so, there's a dog, right? That's very, it's a very graphic image, but you know right away that that's a dog. When you do this, and here, this is something you may not know. When you do this, you have this shape up on top, that's straight, and then you have the forehead, but then you do this. If that, if it's not parallel like that, then you come down, and there's your snout like that, and put the ears up. Now you've got a cat. Look at that. See, cat. Dog, right there, cat. There's your, there's your difference, okay? It's very, very cool. And the cats obviously have different eyes. The dogs have, right about the, the bridge of the nose is where you can put that eye for the dog, okay? So very, very quick, there you go. Now, if we wanna draw the body, over here, we draw the snout of the dog. The first thing I like to do is get this long kind of sweep through the body. And I break that, I usually break up my four legged animals into six different sections. We've got the head, here's our ear, okay. All right, then we've got the neck. There's that flow right there. I'm gonna build on top of. And then we've got the shoulders. Now right here, dogs are four-legged, so their shoulder blades are on the sides of their bodies. Our shoulder blades are on our back. But, because we, that's because we stand upright. All four-legged animals, their shoulder blades are, are moved around to the side of their body. So there's a shoulder blade right there. So his shoulders are pushed into the front, and then we've got the wrist and then feet right there like that. Okay, there's the elbow. There's his elbow. There's his upper arm, just like we have an upper arm. Forearm, just like our forearm. Wrist, just like our wrist. Okay. And then there's the rib cage. And notice how that rib cage, we get this kind of hourglass shape going back. Well, dogs <clears throat> have, especially dogs that are, you know, more active, uh, more athletic, they, they're very, very, they, they haven't really lost their ability to run and pursue, you know, dogs are meat eaters. And so being meat eaters, they don't need a lot of guts for, for lack of a better way of putting it. Meat is very easy to digest. So predators, dogs specifically, and cats and things like that, they don't have a lot of guts. And so that's enabled them to become very light on their feet very quick and it enables them to pursue their prey. Animals like horses and cattle and things like that, which are normally prey animals, they, are, they need a lot of guts. They eat plant matter. Plant matter is very hard to digest. And so they've, over eons, they've built up all these big guts. And so... They're very, very heavy in the body, but dogs are not. Now I know there's smaller breed dogs and bulldogs and things like that, but even those dogs, because even if they're squat, they still are kind of light on their feet in comparison to a plant eater of the same proportion. Okay, so I was talking about the head. All right, there's the head. There's the neck, shoulders. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. 
All right, then we have the, the trunk of the body. And there's a, a muscle that comes through here called the latissimus muscle. You don't always have to show that. All right, and then here we have the hips and the pelvis. And that comes down like so. The knee comes right about even with the body, generally, okay? And then you have the, here's the back leg goes to the knee, that's the thigh, then the calf muscle, and then the foot. There's the ankle, the heel, just like that. And if you want to draw the other foot in place, just like that. And then we've got the tail, and the drum, drawing right off the page. So there's a dog. There's a, maybe the other foot right here, kind of standing with his feet next to each other. So when you think about uh, these, these six different sections, okay, so there's the head, neck, shoulders, and front arms, trunk of the body, back legs and pelvis, and then the tail. This is, this is rigid. The head is rigid. Obviously, it doesn't bend. The neck is flexible. The shoulders are rigid. The trunk of the body and the spine is flexible. The pelvis back here is rigid. And then the tail is flexible. If you think about that, that enables you to pose your dog any way you want. So I can come in and I can say, all right, I want my dog to be jumping. Well, I know that, let's say he's coming up, his ears are flopping up in the air. And I go, all right, I want him running through the air like this. Well. The head is going to be rigid. I can get some flexibility in the neck. And then here, I'm thinking about that shoulder. I know the, the, the uh, shoulder blades are right here. And draw through. When you're drawing, think about the shoulders coming around on the other side, right? So here, I've got him running here. The other foot coming down. There's the chest coming down. And here we get some flexibility with the, the body coming up, right? And then here is going to be, right here is the pelvis. That area right there, there's a the pelvis coming around. So here we can bring his feet kind of coming forward. And then the tail. Maybe he's reaching down with that other foot because his back legs are going to land. You get a nice little straight right there. So you're able to get any kind of pose that you want when you're thinking about that flexibility. Let's try another one. Maybe he's looking down. The, neck's, the neck is bent. Maybe, you know, maybe we're looking down and he's, and he's kind of curled up on the ground. And he's got his arms pulled up. See, there's that shoulder, like that. The shoulder blade comes in like that, and there's a shoulder there. There's an upper arm. And then that front foot, front arm. There you go, see? And his, his neck is bent. And we got some flexibility right here in the back. We've all seen our dog curled up on the floor. Maybe his tail is back here, like so. Here's a pelvis, back leg, like so. Like that, and he's just snoozing away sleeping on the floor, okay? So there's a, a little curve in the body, like so, all right? Th these are quick gestures as well. Don't get too caught up in all the details right away. You can do the gestures and then you can add your details later on. If we draw our dog in three quarter, think of it as drawing a, a ball, and then you can attach a nose, I draw it usually like that, like that, like so. There's a nice big eye. 
Remember, there's cheekbones. Even if you're drawing a cartoony dog, think about the anatomy. Let's draw floppy ears. Just like that. There's an eye. Here's the other eye. And here's another floppy ear. Muscle coming down. There's that jaw. Comes down like that. And the neck. Okay. And then one more. How do you draw a dog with his mouth open? Well, once again, if you think about that snout coming out, okay, like so. There's his eye. Now, think about where the jaw is connected. The jaw connects back here, back under the cheekbone, right? So you want to make sure that that's where the jaw comes down, like so. And that is how you draw a dog with their mouth open, like so. See there? It opens back here. That's where the hinge is, okay? So that's basically how you draw a dog. Once again, I'm drawing all over the place here. Start with that head, and you got that nice, fluid build through the body. You start with the head, then the neck, shoulders, like so, and the arms. See that tapered shape through the body? I'm drawing right into my other part of the drawing. And then right here to the back legs. Boom. That's how you draw a dog. And remember, remember that parallel up on top and on the snout. Okay? And that is how you'll get your dog always looking like a dog. Even in three-quarter, like we did here, think about the plane of the head being right there. That's the plane, and then the plane of the snout, like that, they're, they're parallel with each other. All right? So there's the basics of drawing a dog. Go on out there, try drawing a dog on your own, put some beauty back in the world, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.